Hello, welcome to another walk in the spirit. Come with me, my name is Steve, and let's have another walk. Now this is a midweek walk. Once in a while I do these, not often, but spring is here in Wisconsin. Yesterday it was 61 degrees, but it was windy. Today I think it's 55, 54, and like hardly any wind, so it's actually a nicer day, and even a little bit more bluer sky. And so i am come out to do this walk in the spirit today. Now this is a special walk in the spirit. A couple weeks back, I put out a video asking for people to donate to um, the ministry in Pakistan that helps orphans and widows. I said anybody who does a hundred dollar donation, I would do a video on the subject they requested. Uh, the person who did this donation of a hundred dollars requested I do a video on repentance. So it's actually a subject I, I've talked about before, willing to talk about, so we'll be doing that today. Um, you won't find that video because I'm making a new video for them. They're getting a new website and they're trying to expand their ministry. I'll talk more about that. Look for that video in the next coming days. Uh, so today, my discussion is repentance. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now I did do a video on repentance, probably two or three of them. And I'm going to talk about repentance from sin, not repentance from dead works. Now I did do a video on repentance from dead works. I did a table in the wilderness video where I sit down in the woods and do a teaching on it and you can find that video here so it's a table of wilderness repentance from dead works excellent video I highly recommend it now the person who wanted me to do this video I think wants me to preach that you need to repent to be raptured now this is something if you've watched my videos I've been uncertain of and I was going to do this video like a week and a half ago, but other things came up. And I've had more time to study on this, and I'm still not 100% certain. But you know what? We live by faith. We live by faith. Paul said in Scripture, there's only one thing he knows, and that's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Scripture says we stand in faith, okay? We don't have everything given to us in full knowledge that's why we live by faith that's why there are de denominational differences but i still believe that we can come to know god's word and god's ways by sta standing on his word walking in the spirit and i did a video oh i think it may be one of my last table in the wilderness videos i forget the name of it where i talk about that we can't we don't have to be wishy-washy on what we stand on in God's Word. I don't remember the name of the video, but you can find it here. But stunning the scripture, I think I've come to believe that repentance is not needed to be raptured. But nonetheless, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Why do I keep saying that? Because that reference is in scripture at least twice, if twice, if not more. Now, I've talked about that we are in what's called the beginning of sorrows. By the way, you'll hear birds singing. It's great to have the songbirds back in Wisconsin. It's a nice sound to hear when I'm out doing these videos. And it's quite warm, so I'm going to unbutton my shirt here. Uh, let's go ahead and pull our first scripture. I'm going to walk down here, and we'll stand here next to the river, about 50 yards, and do our first scripture. As I was saying... I talk about that we are in the beginning of sorrows, and the beginning of sorrows is a transitional period. And I also think that when Jesus and John the Baptist were on the earth, that was a transitional period. And they both spoke, repent for the kingdom of God is near. So we're going to read a scripture where John the Baptist said it and where Jesus said it. Now the river is still frozen and it's a bit muddy here but I wore my boots expecting to see mud. But this river will melt in the next couple 
weeks. But well, we're going to read our first scripture here. This will be our background. We're going to read Matthew 3, 1 and 2, I believe it is. Sorry for tilting the camera. Beautiful day. I may have to roll my sleeves up. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So John was preparing the way for Jesus. And but Jesus said the same thing. We'll pull that scripture out in a couple minutes. And I don't fully understand why both of them pushed repent for the kingdom of God as a hand. Well, of course, both John the Baptist and Jesus want everybody to go into the kingdom. Why was it so heavily pushed? Maybe because they both knew that once they were gone, others would not promote the kingdom as heavily. Now, Paul does, praise God. Paul did a really good job in promoting the kingdom. By the way, if you're lost in what I'm speaking about, I'm not talking about the loss of salvation. There's a difference between the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom. And if you want to learn about the gospel of the kingdom, you can find my video here. I'm not talking about salvation, folks, but I'm talking about living godly so that you can participate in the kingdom of God and live in New Jerusalem and not be stuck outside. So let's read one more scripture on this. We'll put this marsh here as our background. Another Matthew verse. Matthew 4, 17. It's only one more chapter away. All right, Matthew 4, 17. One simple verse. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is very important. I mean, that's why it's a central point of my ministry, the kingdom of God. Repentance is not needed for the rapture. And I'll explain why. You see, I keep saying the key difference between believing and being born again is, and being in the kingdom, is in the being in the kingdom you have to be, built, be born again. And you have to live in repentance. But Jesus said in John chapter 3, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. I'll put the reference on the screen. I'm not going to read it. But you see, the rapture in Matthew 25, let's go ahead and just pull it out. We'll stand here. Matthew 25 speaks on the parable of the ten virgins. A lot of scriptures in Matthew today. Matthew 25. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. It is really Kevin who really has promoted verse 1 in this. That while this, this parable speaks of the rapture, all of the ten virgins are pointing towards the kingdom. Okay? Let's read that again. 25.1 Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at a midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. 
Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and he said, I surely I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore watch, for you neither, for you know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. So you see, five did not have extra oil, and they were not raptured. But it says in verse one, this is likened unto the kingdom. They all repent after. Okay, and they go and buy their oil, but it but it's too late, and he didn't know them. He didn't know them. But they become the tribulation saints. They do repent, and they will make it into the kingdom, but they won't make it into the rapture. They will most likely, most of them, if not all of them, will be will die for their faith. But the another key is, is he says, I do not know you. See, I think there's two two ways to have the born-again experience. One is acknowledging Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified in Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. The second is coming to know the Lord Jesus personally. That's how I actually became born again. It was later, okay? It was later that I began to understand the Bible and His Word and His ways and understand Galatians 2.20. I didn't know about Galatians 2.20, but I know I needed the Lord, so I sought Him out. So it's, it's not like, okay, the half the church is raptured, the other half is like, oh, I need to be born again and so they go and find out what it takes okay but it's not instantaneous when a when a baby is born out of the womb at that moment when he comes out of the womb does the baby know his father no it takes time to develop a relationship and for the child to know the father in the same way Jesus speaks about coming and living in us. Don't know what kind of bird that is, but wow, it's loud. I don't see it yet. Oh, I see some birds, I think, over in that field over there. So it, it takes time for Jesus and the believer to develop a relationship. And that's why even though they went to go get the extra oil, he still did not know them. Okay? It takes time. Now look at this. Big ice shoves. I've never been... Well, maybe years ago when I was younger I saw ice shoves, but... This is the first time as an adult I've seen one. So we see something else here, okay? Not only did he not know them because it takes time to develop a relationship, we also see that half of them were not raptured. Now, if it were true that everyone needs to not only be born again and has to repent, you wouldn't have half the church raptured. You'd have less than that. You'd have less than that. Because those who are saved and outside the kingdom are going to outnumber those who are in the kingdom. So it would be a smaller percentage of those raptured. And I know there are preachers out there who... Because uh, years ago, I was like, 
one of the very few who preached a partial rapture. But as we've come into the beginning of Soros, more people have begun to understand that. And there is a preacher out there who thinks there's like only going to be 10% of the church get raptured. Then now that's ridiculous, okay? We see in Scripture it's 50%. So this is why I believe that repentance is not needed for the rapture. But it is needed for the kingdom. So what happens if someone is born again, has a relationship with Christ, but is living in sin, I think they will be raptured, okay? Again, I'm going by faith here. I still could be wrong, but I believe, believe it. I believe by studying these scriptures, we see this, okay? So what happens to these believers, born again, but living in sin, they get raptured. What happens to them? Now, I actually, again, I said I spoke of this in other videos, and I did a video, I think it's something to the effect of being raptured but not being in the kingdom, and you can find that video here. One moment, folks. Now, I'm going to read one scripture that speaks on what's going to happen to these kind of believers, these born-again Christians. Pull the scripture out. Once again, we're in Matthew. Matthew 13, 41. Matthew 13, 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. So here in Scripture, we see that Jesus is going to take out of his kingdom, out of his kingdom, these obviously these aren't unbelievers, but believers in his kingdom that walk in lawlessness. This is why we say, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. You see, the rapture can happen at any moment. I believe it is imminent. I've believed it since I woke up to the signs of the times in 2017, and I think it is nearly here. And once you are in eternity, you cannot repent. My last scripture for the day, it's going to be in Revelation. Revelation 22:11. That's a beautiful day beautiful day Revelation 22 11 he who is unjust let him be unjust still he who is filthy let him be filthy still he who is righteous let him be righteous still he who is holy let him be holy still so you see folks once you enter into eternity and leave this planet you can't repent you can't repent now is the time to repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. You might be a believer in Christ. You might be born again and have a relationship with him. But if you're living in sin, you're living in offense and you'll be removed from the kingdom of God. Turn around, we're almost done here. Now, I did another video talking about these kind of believers. Those who are disqualified, disqualified. There are many who are believers in Christ and aren't born again. Many who believe in Jesus, but have never repented. But we're talking about those who have been born again, but fell into sin. These are those who are disqualified. One moment. So you see, it's quite really ignorant of us to think there's only one kind of Christian. There's various kinds of Christians. There are those who are born again, those who believe and are not born again, those who are born again and are overcomers, those who are born again who fall into sin. Those who are born again and fall into sin are disqualified if they're living in sin. Okay. 
Now, once again, I'm not saying you need to be perfect. One more time, as I shared in many other videos, I think it's 1 John 1, 8. 8 and 9, I believe. Where he says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's repentance, folks. That's repentance. I'm not talking about living sin free, because if you're living sin free, then you don't need to repent because you've been perfected. But Jesus didn't ask that to be perfected. He's asking you, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He understands you're going to fall in sin. It says in Romans that the flesh, the body of sin, is still in our body. Sin is still in our body while we're here. And there's another scripture that says we will be like him when we see him. So once we're raptured, we'll be given resurrected bodies and we'll no longer have sin in us when we step into eternity. So now is the time to repent. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Because you might be sa saved, you might be born again, and if you are, whether you're living in sin or not, you'll be raptured if you're born again. But you'll be removed from the kingdom and set outside New Jerusalem. You will have eternal life, but you won't be allowed in the city. Again, see my other video, The Gospel of the Kingdom, which I believe I point to at the beginning of this video. Well, that's it, folks. Um, not sure if the brother who donated $100 is getting what he expected, but I got to preach what God's Word is. He wanted me to preach on repentance, and this is something that I was uncertain of and kept flip-flopping. Kevin was also speaking on this in one of our last Iron Sharpens Iron video, reminding me that there are those who will be in the kingdom and will be removed. Pointing me towards the idea that it's not a matter of repenting to be raptured, but having that extra oil. And that some will be removed from the kingdom once we get up there. All right, folks, that's it for today. Um, I should be doing a video this weekend, so look forward to that. Also, I will be having a video, hopefully, in the next couple of days, also on the ministry in Pakistan. God bless, folks. We'll see you soon, Lord willing, if we're not raptured and if I'm not censored. God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.